Hi guys, let me set my stopwatch. I'm Boaz in your lovely room today. I work very closely with Jalango TV. We have sat down with him and we have agreed that we come up with programs like these models that will be helping students do well in their exams. And now he's also becoming a lawmaker. These are going to be very vital programs. Now, I am a mentor and I'm a tutor in mathematics and physics and even in actual science. I do it both in online platform and face-to-face -face or one-to-one -one person. This my program has really helped so many students. Like currently, if Mari, if you're there in German, I have a student in, in German called Mari, in Lis, Brain, Friend, Schule. I also have some friends. I have my mentee in the United States, in the University of Minnesota. That's Joseph, if you're there, you can share my program and my plans and my training to all the students in the University of Minnesota. In South Africa, Angie, share this to other people. And so many people outside there. I've even some of my students in St. Stephen's College, that is Kefa, share some of these videos of you have, you have watched with your program in, the, in South Africa, even in Canada, in, in the United Kingdom, all my students, because this is now an international channel will be breaking down, talking about specific topics. As you can see, I have quite a number of models here. Some have pinned here. I have quite a number here of the Manila papers. You know, they say great teachers use models. I have the markers here, the, the permanent and different forms. I've made so many slides that I've been sharing with my students across the globe, all the way to Asia, the African continent, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe, all the way. This program is covering to all the teens, all the young people, and even to the parents. Because I do normally conduct quite a number of conferences with parents, having to know how do we help our children do well in school. Now, when you check over here, you can see I've written, unleash the power of goal setting. Unleash the power of the goal setting. Now, one of the things that I would like to share with you guys, what is a goal? And this is what I've made and I've also shared on my digital platform. A goal is something that you want to achieve. Goals are the reasons for your studies or whatever it is you are doing. They're like goalposts in a football match. Now, the way I've put it on that model, a goal is something that you want to achieve. Whether you are a parent and whether you are a student in the middle school, in the high school, even in A levels, even at campus. So what have you said to do? Like basically I've put it, it is something that you want to achieve. Assume an example you have, you are playing a football and here is the goal post. Here is the goal post. So remember most of the times when you are playing the football, all the players, <laughs> they are targeting. If here is the ball, all of them are targeting to kick the ball to the what? to the goalposts, in between the goals. So assume you have players that are playing the football game and there are no goalposts. That is as practical as the Bible it is. This one goes in reality. You cannot play the football minus having the goalpost. So that's why I talked about here the goal setting. And if you want to be happy, set goals that command your thoughts, that liberates your energy and inspire your hope. Because I believe each and every person, you have the passion, you have the desire. And I usually call it the potential. Having the potential. Potential is something that you have not done. It is you that we have not seen. And until you do the goal setting. So today, if you wake up any morning and you feel you are bored with the life, uh, if you don't get up every morning with the burning passion, the burning passion or a desire to do things, then it simply implies you do not have enough goals. So to me, goal setting is very important. So you need to look at how much and by when. How much and by when. So you have to be specific. You need to know what you want to set. So to me, when I say how much and by when, to make sure the goal unleashes the power of your subconscious mind. Like now you are a student, you are in high school, Maybe you are in the middle school or, or A levels or at the university. And here is a very good example I made. 
include make model whatever you want to achieve under specific time and i'm going to com combine this program with what i call the time management skills which is going to be very important in your learning so please you can post the video and take some of the notes like here i say i will read you as a student you can decide you will read a specific or study a specific topic by 5 pm an example you want to study a topic maybe in mathematics on quadratic equation you know very well that this evening or this morning or this afternoon or this weekend you are going to study a topic of quadratic and that is still very broad because a quadratic topic is broken into different subtopics so you have to indicate and by what time that's what i mean being very specific so as a student you need to come up with your own personal timetable these are applicable across to all students even my mentees in in, in german mari you listen to this in st stephen's college kefa you have to listen to this all the way to australia you need to set a specific goal and even talk about the time you have to write out your goal in details. Even if you are a parent, you want to build the house, you must indicate the location, the landscape, furnitures you are going to use there, the artwork, the sound, because your subconscious mind will know opportunities to hone it to help you reach your goal. So that's talk about being very specific. And you need to set the goals that stretch you. You need to set goals that makes you think beyond yourself. Like here I clearly state, it pays to have goals that will require you to grow, to achieve them. Some that will make you little uncomfortable. Have you ever set a goal that makes you a little uncomfortable? Where you think, will I really achieve this? <laughs> will I really make this? So if it makes you uncomfortable, then it, it stretches your sub, subconscious mind. Okay? Material goal is to become a master of life. You learn new skills. You will expand your vision of what possible. You will build new relationships. Learn to overcome your fears, consideration, and the roadblocks. What you think will block you from achieving your goal. And that only comes when you do what? You set the goals that stretches you. I'm talking to some of young people in this world. An example, you score a grade of B and you want to get a grade of A star. Sometimes you feel it is really stretching you. So you have to come up with policies, individual policies, that will make you go through and score that the grade Esther. An example, you want to be a medical practitioner. You want to be a doctor. You want to be an engineer. Maybe you want to study pharmacy, architecture, or study actual science like I personally did. I did education, mathematics, and physics. And I also did actual science, which helps me come up with so many models in life to help the student, mentor them, coach them, even up to the universities where I teach students on quantitative analysis and quantitative techniques. Now, you need to set the goals that stretch you. Create breakthrough goals. You can talk about weekly, daily, quarterly. You know the specific things that you need to achieve. Then the other point here, reread your goals three times a day. This performs magic. I know some of you do not believe in that. An example, you need to create a timeline to be rereading your goals. Every morning you wake up and read it louder. You can't be in a room yourself. Read it louder. It connects your subconscious mind. List of goals you read loud with passion and enthusiasm. It's like what I say here. Close your eyes and picture each goal as if it were already accomplished. Start to have that feeling that already you have accomplished that particular goal. It activates the power of your desire and what psychologists call the structural tension in your brain. Your brain wants to close the gap between your current, your current position, your current state of life to what you are supposed to be achieving. The other important part here is create goal book. There is nobody who can achieve it without having it written down. Because if you don't have a goal, you have already failed in whatever you want to achieve. So the first important thing that you have, you must have a goal book. You must have a goal book. Like if you find a way, you must find a way to create a goal book. And in that book, you keep on ticking. 
If there are some things you are supposed to achieve in that particular week and you have not achieved them, you have to revisit that goal book and say, okay, add a weekly, daily goals and quarterly. Have I really achieved them? Then you come up with the strategies and models to help you. Maybe you are a student, you decide that, you know, I've not been doing well in my mathematics or my science. Whether it is a math or maybe it's a science subject, then you come up with a personal timetable. Then you ask yourself, if I used to study late at night and I did not do well in my exams, what am I supposed to do? That one takes me back to what we call revisiting your peak hours, your peak time that you have the energy, you have the passion and the strength to do it. So I think you need also to check on the specific areas that having your goal book. Then you carry them in your wallet. You can carry them wherever you have. You can take a piece of paper, like what I have here. You just note down your goals. And the moment you've noted down your goals, you will definitely know, this is what I want to achieve by this specific time. And this is going to be very important in your life. You must have a goal book. You must create breakthrough goal. You need goals that stretches you. You have to be specific. Just like in the previous model, I was trying to note down, this was very important, uh, we, may, we may have the, the long-term goal, uh, the visions and the short-term, you can have the, 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 the term motivation. These are going to be very, very important. Then some of the benefits of goal setting. Please, you can note them down. The first benefit, goals will give you a target to aim for. Remember that, that when you have a goal, it gives you a target to aim for. If you're a student in high school, you want to achieve maybe become a doctor, you become an engineer, an architect, an actuary, you have that target to aim for, then you keep working towards it. Are we good? Then goals can help you concentrate your time and effort. That's why many a times I talk to my students, I aim so much on this idea on the time management. Remember, if you don't have a personal timetable as a student, you don't have the time to study the subject, you've not broken down your goals, trust me, you may not do well in your exams. The other important aspect I talked about here, goals can motivate. They, they definitely provide motivation, persistence and the desire. What I call the intrinsic motivation. Not really being motivated by the school setup, but by the building or the architect of your school but you get deeply inspired. Because you know, if you said maybe today is a Monday and you say by Friday, I must have done comprehensively the topics on the quadratics, on the topics on, on calculus one, or ordinary differential equations, or, or a certain topic in science, maybe reproduction, maybe any topic that you choose then you have set a timeline, so it will definitely, goals help you concentrate your time and your effort. Now the other point here, goals can provide a roadmap to take you from where you are to where you want to be. So goals provide a roadmap. So somebody listening to me today, in Africa, in Asia, in Australia, North America, South America, even in the Antarctic, Please take note of these points that I'm telling you. Because I said a well-written plan with an accompanying set of intermediate goals provide a framework to reach away your targets. So this is going to be very important. I've made so many models that I'm, I've now attached them into different models. I'm, I'm sharing it online in my website. So please subscribe to our channels so you may learn most of these things I'm talking about here. Now listen to this. Uh, disadvantages of not setting goals. Number one, your fortune is uncertain, you have no clear destination, you may lack meaningful progress in the direction of your main goal, you can never live up to your full potential because there is never anything important enough to give you your total commitment if you don't have goals. And the other point I had made here is very clear, you have no clear destination. And remember this, somebody listening to me, most of you have boarded a flight, an aircraft, no aircraft will leave the airline, will leave the runway unless the destination is filed and the towers knows where the plane or the aircraft is going to. This one is a practical thing in life that if you do not know your destiny, you don't know where you are going to, you don't know your target as a parent talking to your child, 
mentoring them, guiding them in whatever you want to do in their success life in school. If there is no goal, there is no roadmap, there is nowhere they are going to reach. And I've also indicated in one of my models that you will waste most of your time doing unnecessary things. Because if you wake up in the morning, you have no list of the things you will do. You will start falling aside and doing wrong things. Like I know the generation of today, most of them are always watching TV set, watching other programs. You shouldn't spend much of your time to do things that are not necessary. Because as they say that, did you know that watching TV most of the times, you lose almost $12,000 per year. Because that time could have been converted into material thing. And I'm talking to young people, I'm talking to teens, I'm talking to people preparing in campus, I'm talking to people doing the, the Cambridge system, the international baccalaureate, the local system, like here in Kenya, all the way to the United States. And I think these are some of the things that we need to take very seriously. Guidelines for setting the goals. There are some of the things I've developed and worked it out. Number one, written. You must find somewhere to write your goals. Number two, specific. You must be specific. Number three, personal. Your goals must be personal. Not what your parents want you to achieve, but it should be a personal initiative. Number three, shared, consistent. They must be measurable, achievable, realistic, and time sensitive. So to all the students I mentor across the whole world, even the one that I teach, I believe that by setting your goals, by having some burning desire to wake up to do something, it is what that will lead you. But number one, you have to state them down. You have to write all the subjects you are doing in that particular time. You have to set your targets knowing the specific grades that you want to achieve. Then come up with models, tailor them, and get people that can help you. If you are a student, why can't you form a group in school? with some of the active students that can guide you in that specific topic. Do you consult with your teachers? Do you ask them questions? Do you ask questions in class? Because I expect all my students to be very active in class. Not passive audience, but active audience. Because remember when a teacher is teaching a specific topic, then you end up not asking questions. The next topic will be built upon that. And you may not understand what you're supposed to do. So these are some of the things that will be a guideline in unleashing the power of the goal setting. As I also move to the time management, where I'm going to break it down into different compartments and guiding you through as you watch our channel, because we are ready to share this across the whole globe and help you as a student. Do you know the topics that you have not been doing well? Because you need to know that. Maybe you are not good in a specific subject in a certain level. Maybe you just say, okay, you are not good maybe in physics. What are you supposed to do? You have to go back to the basics. There are some of the things that I tell my students. You have to go back to the basics. You need to have all the course books. Maybe you are in grade 9. You have to go back to either grade 8, grade 7, or even grade 6. Because remember what is tested even in your exams, the curriculum tests what has been taught. So if you feel you are not good in physics or a specific topic or the topic of moments or the topic of a certain equation in a certain grade, year group, you have to go back. Go back to those examples that you have in those textbooks. Revise them and ask questions. And that can only happen if you set your goals. If you manage your time well, which I'm just about to take you through, how do you manage your time? And I would encourage all my students across the whole world, make sure that you do well in your mathematics, make sure you do well in your physics, in your biology, in your chemistry. And that can only happen if you develop your deep passion from within you. Because I believe it begins with the desire. It begins with your thoughts. Whatever you're thinking, then it becomes the words. Then from your mouth it becomes the action. Then it becomes your character that finally leads to your destiny. Because the world will not judge you on how much things you've broken, but what you can build, what you can develop, and the good things that you can bring to life. So please from today go back to the basics. Make sure that you set your goals. Every morning you must have a list of things that you have to achieve that day. From goal setting we now transition into what we call the time management. 
Now, what do you see on the board? You see a cock and a clock. So that's one of the most important models I've been trying to make across. Now, here you see the young girl, the time management skills. So time management is key. The word time, if somebody comes and asks you, how old are you? Is simply they're asking you how you have spent your time. If you talk about your 12 years, or if you talk about your 91 years, this is how you have spent your time in life. Now, the first important thing that I've noted, I said as earlier before, I have made so many slides. I've shared across all my students, across all the countries that I mentor them. Now, time is unusual. All days are 24 hours in all corners of the world. This is translated to 168 hours in a week. Now, if somebody comes and asks you how you have spent your 168 hours in a week, would you be able to be accountable? Would you tell that person how you spent all your 168 hours in a week? And here goes, I've talked about tips that can help you improve your organization. So here we are going to talk about your organization. Please, you can note it down. And the other important, prioritization and timekeeping. Organization, prioritization and timekeeping. So how do you prioritize your time as a student, as a parent, as an adult and as a teen? Because time management cuts across, even if I talk to the corporates, to the students, to the children, my message is still the same. Because time management cuts across all. So this is one of the most important things that I wanted to talk about. Then here it comes. If you see the young girl here on the time management skills, what can you note? It's like the young girl is either at the park waiting for the school bus to pick her, or she's walking outside the school gate. But it indicates like she is reading some book. She's managing her time wisely because every time she studies and walk by the book, she's taking good care of her time. Then that will definitely translate to the good performance of that particular child that we have over there. Now, successful students tend to have well-developed time management skills. I've talked across to many students. I've also interviewed quite a number. And these are some of the things because the models I've made, the slides I've created and even shared, even in my website, in the Disneyland Media International, as an international company that mentors all. Listen to this. The ability to focus on the right things at the right time. So if you want to be a great student, you need to focus on the right things at the right time. Like you know the time you are years of study in school. So you shouldn't be found in taking drugs or doing engaging in wrong activities at school. The other point here, the capacity to work quickly to meet their study and revision targets. And this one even goes to your study in mathematics. So the capacity to work quickly to meet their study and revision targets. Maybe this week you've decided you will study how many subjects? Maybe three subjects. And you say you have mathematics, you have physics, you have chemistry, maybe the biology. Then you know on a Tuesday evening, you are supposed to study these specifics. And as I had said earlier about the goal setting, you've already made your personal timetable in the house. You know the times you will be studying these specific topics. Then you will meet your revision targets without failure. Number three, the knack of seeing each task through the completion. I know many students do not complete the task given even in school, even in the projects. Then you end up coming back to school in the morning and coping from your fellow friends, which is wrong. Remember, in this life, you are not created to be a photocopy. You are an original person. So make sure that you do not copy assignment from your friends. If you set your time well and struggle through it, and even being guided through the YouTube channels. Like I do teach a lot of mathematics. So to guide you guys how you do your studying there. So that is very, very part of the important aspect they need to look. Now, what do I mean by prioritizing your time? Now, here is the model. The success to time management lies in your ability to prioritize which activities to undertake and when. So I'm talking about which activities. You need to know which activities and when. An example, your teacher, mathematics teacher has given you homework, your biology, your English teacher, your literature, or your history. 
or you are a religious studies teacher. So if you prioritize them, you will know, I do this and I do this at this specific time. So at the end of the day, you will not be confused. The near it goes, to prioritize your time, you need to ask and answer the following important questions. I have made these models through my experience as a teacher, as a student at the university, and even in high school. And I tutor so many students, so I listen to them. So whatever I have here, some of them you may never find in textbooks. You may never find them even in the YouTube. So they are real life experiences. What I've modeled from what I listened from them, what I practiced. Like during my time in high school, I was always the best in the mathematics. I never failed in maths. Even if we had a contest in the, the whole Nyanza, I was always number one. Because of these practices I did, so I've downloaded them from my subconscious mind, put them to paper, and now sharing with you. Now listen to this. Are you able to say what you do with your 168 hours in a week? In the university where you are? In the high school? In the college? In the middle school? Even those young teens that are preparing to do their checkpoint. The year six students. The year nine preparing for the checkpoint. Those people are doing the Cambridge, the International Baccalaureate, the American system, all the way to South Africa, in Cairo, Egypt, United States, in Germany, in Canada. I'm now an international mentor. And these are the things that you have to put in place. Please make sure you note them down. Can you say with certainty what activities provide you with the most output and which ones take up most of your time? So when I talk about an output, dear friends, let me rub here so that I may explain. Which activities provide you with the most output? An example, if you have a machine here, and whatever comes in, we call it the input. Whatever comes out, we call it the output. To the students in A levels, and even in the middle school I teach about functions, they know what I mean. If you call this one a machine, or what we call a mapping. So the input, an example of maybe the time you spent, the time you are going to spend studying, that can be an input. The materials, the cost, maybe the books your mother, your parents buy, the school fee, that comes under the input. Your desires that you put here. Then if it gets here, the output will be the results. Maybe scoring an Esther, it depends on the input that you put. So if you put lesser time, you do not study, you spend your time leisure, walk, watching the Mexican soap operas, watching all the series that's now all over the world, then end, you end up scoring a grade U, a grade F, or a grade G. is because the input. An example, if you put a maze here, a maze seedling, when the maze gets into the machine, then whatever comes out is the flour. So you cannot put the maze here, then whatever that comes here, maybe is a different product, or maybe milk, or yogurt. It depends on what you put here. So these models I'm trying to craft are very important and very passionate about them. So work on your input, because the machine is maybe the school, or that life you are living. So at the end of the day, what comes out is called the product. Another most important thing under the models, which I've developed so many of them over here, are you aware of your peak energy time? When you are most productive and you should therefore schedule the most difficult task. And I want to be very sincere about this point. I know many students always say, you know, there are some subjects that they're scared of, maybe physics and mathematics, and listen to this. The peak energy time, if I talk about peak, the peak energy time. Maybe you are the kind of a student or a person that if you wake up very early, you are still strong, you are passionate, your subconscious mind is active. Schedule the most difficult task. You can go and schedule maybe a topic, a difficult topic in physics. I'm talking about physics mostly and mathematics and actual science because I'm an expert in those areas. I'm an academia. <laughs> I'm a mathematician in those areas. Now listen to this. You schedule the most difficult task. You decide a topic. Maybe if the topic of waves, the topic of energy, even if it is maths, maybe in calculus, maybe in integration, hyperbolic functions, the integrals. 
You need to schedule when you have much more energy in those particular topics that you have, which is very, very important that you need to look into. The other most important, important point I want to talk about, keeping a time log. Keeping a time log. A time log is an important tool that should assist you to manage your time better. It is simply a tool. So you need to keep your time log. Now, the following are practical steps in developing a time log. Number one, for seven days, make a count for what you do, your time each hour. That will allow you to identify how you spent your 168 hours. This one goes to all the students in the entire globe. I'm talking to parents. Follow through with your child. You can register them under my program of mentorship. We guide them on how they manage your time. The last point here, once you have completed your time log, you can use it to manage your time. Because there is no way you can start talking about managing your time if you don't have that time log. Time log is simply a program that you will be using to do that. Now, let me guide you through this, which is very important. Using weekly time log. If you have a weekly time log, you have to identify how to do activities. These are, these are very important concepts. That is what I call have to do activities. The other thing you ought to do. Ought to do activities. Then we have like to do activities. This is some of the most important things I want to talk about. There are some things that you have to do. There are some things that you ought to do. There are some things that you just like to do. Maybe you like watching your TV channel and this may not be the right activity to do. Maybe you like meeting your friends or going to your grandpa's or your grandma's. Maybe you like just playing around, <laughs> playing hide and seek to young people like in year six. But they don't know the preparation for checkpoint in year six becomes important. Even in year nine, even in year 11, the IGCSC student, the GCE, even people in A-levels, the advanced subsidiary and the A-levels, even people at the university, undergraduates, college, people preparing for their PhD. Now, listen to this very important. What are have, have to do activities? The first category of the activities you need to consider. Listen to this. Have to do activities have the highest priority and are the critical items that must be done each week. These activities are vital to success and have a high value in terms of your achievement. In your school, in your performance. They have high achievement. Even in terms of your career. Because if you do well in a scientific subject, like students who want to do maybe engineering, medicine, being researchers, Trust me, there are some activities that we call have to do. And the models I'm telling you, you cannot find some of them in the online platform. But I'm now bringing them to you. It has spent, it has taken me hundreds of hours preparing these models, talking to different students, talking to different teachers, from German to South Africa to Kenya, Cairo, United States, and the United Kingdom. So I combine all these experiences from what they speak. Then I put them to book. I write them in, in, into pamphlets. And I'm now sharing with you freely on a digital platform. So you can learn from them. And you become best in whatever that you do. The other important model that I want to share with you. Ought to do activities. Okay. Ought to do activities are not such a high priority. And are therefore less essential. And do not therefore have critical deadlines, but they are nevertheless moderately important to the achievements of your goal. Ought to do activities can be postponed. There are some things that you ought to do. You can definitely postpone them. And maybe if you wanted to visit your grandma, and yet you have a project you have to accomplish as a parent, you are to have a free weekend, you don't have to go to your job. And you know very well your child has not been scoring good grades. Did you arrange and meet mentors like me to talk with your child? Or that weekend, maybe if you're taking some wine, you go and meet your friends. So maybe meeting your friends, taking your wine, or attending a birthday party to your friend is an ought-to-do activity. They're moderately equally important, but you can postpone them and spend the time with your children over the weekend. Now listen to this. Like to do activities. You just like them. Like to do activities are of low priority, key number one and contribute relatively less important to goals. Did you hear that? 
They may be fun and exciting but can be postponed or even avoided altogether. Did you get that? They can be postponed. So there are so many activities that are not really very important to the performance of your child or you as a person. Then you must have what we call a daily list. You must have what is called a daily list. Now that you have prioritized your activities into have to do, ought to do, I've just said, and like to do, you will be able to manage your time more effectively. Now, each day, draw up a to-do list by identifying have to do, ought to do, like to do. Then rank them in order of their importance. Did you listen to what I said? Very important. You will come up. I'm now teaching you this one very effectively. And I can be your mentor in this because I'm an expert in what I'm talking about. It has made me score brilliant grades, even in my, in my studying at the campus and elsewhere. And it has helped so many students change their attitude their perception, like those who have registered under my program in Disneyland Media International, where we mentor them and guide them on digital platform. They don't need to be around in Africa. Some of them in, are in Australia, in South America, North America, in Europe, but we still connect and their parents are coming up with very positive reports that their children are really changing. Now listen to this. This will enable you to organize your activities that in turn will reduce stress. So what are you supposed to do as a parent? Sit down with your children and draw a table. You will draw a table of three columns. Where you will have, have to do, ought to do, and like to do activities. The moment before you come up with this table, you have to state. You know the meaning of stating. All the activities that you have to conduct that week. Then you start categorizing them. Which one will fall under have to do, ought to do, and like to do. So you can delete some of the like to do, then you postpone some of the ought to do. Then the ones that you have to do, then you must do them in the right time. And this is very, very important aspect that I'm training you today. It's very, very important. Let me remove the young lady over there. So first of all, you will enumerate. I'm helping you to come up with a very great model. You will come up with a table where you will have have to do, ought to do, and like to do. Then you categorize them. And this one will really help you improve on how you are working with your, with your child. Now, there is something I would also love to talk about here called time wasters. What do I mean by time wasters? It's a waste of time. That is what is called the time wasters. What comes to your mind when you hear about time wasters? It is a feature of being human to waste time. Everyone does it to some extent. Now, time wastage can be categorized into two important headings. And I want to teach you that one today if you did not know, as I check my stopwatch. Time wastage can be categorized into two important headings. Number one, we talk about self-inflicted. Self-inflicted time wasters. Then we have external we have external time waster. So we have the category one and the second category because you cannot discuss something without putting them into categories. So once I've categorized, I'll be able to break it down and, and, and convert it into soft copy and put to you, to put to your channels that it may help your children. And I know soon we will be working with different media like here in Kenya, we will be working closely with, if possible, the Citizen TV, the NTV, the KTN, to help reach so many learners, even in the newspapers. Because a time has come that this word time management becomes the key to the progress and the performance of your child. And as we stop from this point, we look, what are these time wasters? Now, please, you can pause my video. You can take the notes. And subscribe to I, my, my channel, Disneyland International, and post your questions. And you keep asking because we make it very much interactive with our clients. Because I believe at the end of the day, it becomes very important to be studied. So guys, we're just continuing here with what, let me set my stopwatch. Now we have the self-inflicted time wasting and the external time wasting.
Now, I want to break it down and to explain to you guys. Now, number one, the self-inflicted procrastination. I start with the first category, and I would love to talk about procrastination. Now, what is procrastination? What is procrastination? It is the habit of putting off doing tasks that are boring, difficult, laborious, or disagreeable. Procrastination is referred to as the thief of time. It steals your time. So remember most of the times that you are not supposed to do the procrastination. Then the other thing that has made so many students, so many parents, and many people is what I call perfectionism. You know, it is easy to get so engrossed in trying to do so many things perfectly that no time is left for other important tasks. And I think that is one of the most important things that we need to check. Perfectionism. You need not to take most of the times perfecting on some areas. Then worry. I know many a times people don't know this is one of the things that waste your time if you worry. So worrying is also another important factor. That time spent worrying is time wasted. Instead, invest the time in carrying out important tasks. So you need to spend your time without worrying about it. Then lastly, that many students have not really gotten it well, we call it personal disorganization. Personal disorganization. Like as a student, do you know where your textbooks are placed? Do you know where you place your stuff? Maybe your geometrical set, your uniforms. Maybe you wake up in the morning and you don't even know where your stuff is supposed to be picked. You lost your uniform, you become disorganized. And I think one of the key features to be a good time manager, you need to be very much organized. So disorganization also wastes a lot of time to many students in whatever they do. Another important aspect here is overcommitment. If you are unable to stay, no, now is the time to be selfish. Lack of priorities, if you have not prioritized the demands on your time, you may be trying to do many things at the same time. Accordingly, you will be unable to concentrate on the important tasks and be tempted to spend too much time on trivialities. I mean simple things that may not really add into the value of what you are doing. Now, how to avoid self-inflicted time wasters? Now, I will train you today, guys, how you will avoid, how do you, how do you avoid this self-inflicted time wasting? The first thing that you need to do that is very important, overcoming procrastination. You have to overcome the procrastination by setting deadlines. I know if you set the deadlines, you will not procrastinate. An example, you say, Maybe on a Friday evening, you say by Saturday at a certain time, you shall have done a specific task. So that is setting deadline that will avoid the procrastination. And sticking to them. Remember when you set the deadline, you have to stick to them. Using prompters, such as writing reminders for yourself. So you must use the prompters. What do I mean by the prompters? You set some things, you attach on the walls. Like I have so many over here in my place. You can see, you must have some things, you just attach it there. You need to know when you are supposed to do something. In your study room as a student or as a parent, you have stuck them all over. So you clearly see this day I'm supposed to do this, do this and do that. So that's some of the things I call the prompters. The third important thing, rewarding yourself when you have completed a task. You can reward yourself. I know many times people ask, how do I reward myself? You can buy yourself a nice stuff. Or take yourself out and have some fun with yourself after making sure that you've completed the task. And I know many young people always wait for somebody else to reward them. You can reward yourself. Then divide time into smaller parts that will make it manageable. Remember, this is a very important key. You have to divide time into manageable parts. Okay? Then the other key important thing is exercising self-discipline. Exercising self-discipline, especially when a task is not enjoyable or seem difficult. I know many students, if they are studying a specific topic, then they find it is hard. 
that they do not want to continue with it. They close the book because it is not enjoyable. So that still takes you back to be self-discipline. Then tidy up by arranging your books and other study items so that you can easily find them. Maybe you need to know where you have put your geometrical set, your textbooks, your past papers in a certain folder with the mark scheme in a different folder, you've labeled them. So if maybe today you are, you are supposed to study your, your mathematics subjects, you know the topics and where you find all the documents. So that will also help you definitely succeed in whatever that you're planning. The other thing here, uh, I've talked about tidying up your room. Uh, what are the benefits of time, effective time management? So I want to talk about the benefits. This one you have to note down because they are going to help you very greatly. Benefits of effective time management. Benefits. Benefits of effective time management. Time management. Now what are the benefits of managing your time effectively? Now here it is. I'm going to stick it over here. Hopefully it will be visible to somebody. Uh, these are some of the, the benefits if you manage your time well as a student and as a parent. One of them here is better planning. So we are talking about planning. Better planning. That's one of the benefits that you will reap if you manage your time well. Whether you are a student in the middle school, in the junior school, in the primary school, in, in whatever grade, college, campus, even a parent, how you manage your stuff in your, with your children. The number two, better organization. So you will have a better organization. You will have a better organization, then less stress. I see many students have been committing suicide across the globe. You shouldn't do that. Because if you well plan yourself and time management, you will never have stress. Or say, you know, tomorrow I have an exam. Why should you be stressed? Because you've been planning across time from different levels. So whatever remains, in fact, you should never study a night to exams. You should be relaxing your mind because you've been prepared well. Another thing, enhanced more productivity. More productivity. When you manage your time well, you become very productive. Then enhanced self-confidence and fewer feelings of guilt. You will be confident. Whether the exams, whatever you are preparing for. Whether it's the Cambridge exams, international bac baccalaureate, the IB diplomas, people doing their thesis at the university. If you prepare well and have this will be the benefits. So guys, as I said earlier, I teach mathematics, physics, and natural science. I'm a mentor. I conduct conferences across, both online and, and, and physical, to the students that are around in this place. I do quite a number of stuff. So you guys, subscribe to our channel and make sure that you post questions. My number is... I will give you guys my number so that you can call me if you want. 0720-814-222. So you can reach me through that contact. If you want to register your children for our mentorship program, either it is online or digital, we can always plan for you, but it has been very productive. And I also say a great thanks to Jalango, who is airing this in his TV channel online. It's reaching thousands and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands. And it's very beneficial because we've talked and we've agreed that we have to become productive to the young people. So this is none other than the Disneyland International. Disneyland. So if you subscribe, this is the channel you subscribe to. Our channel here is Disneyland. Disneyland International. So subscribe to our channel for more videos for mentoring and also in the lessons in mathematics.